G'day! In today's video, I'm having a look at the Acer Nitro 5 2020 edition. And by having a look, I mean I'm going to open it up and put in a single stick of 8 gig DDR4 2666 and upgrade the RAM in it. So if we go down here and have a bit of a look, we will see a model number. So built in April 2020, go over here an AN515-54 series, or model number N18C3. So to begin with, we're gonna to have to take out the various screws, which I only did a 2018 model the other day. And with that, there was a cover here and here for the RAM and the hard drive. So we'll start off by taking out all the screws that are here. Do like this warning here saying hot, hot surface warning, do not touch. I they expect it to get roasting there. Assumably quite a few copper pipes are running across there. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, ten screws holding it into position. So if me, I'm going to move it over to the side just a little bit. Get a, get a little bit of a pry tool in there. So let's just lift it up this front section. And if I use that now to put in a pry tool, or a plastic pry tool, so I don't damage the plastic as I open it, you can use a bank card. And I should just be able to slide it around the edges. Like so. Spin it around, I'll now do the front. There we go. And I should just be able to lift it up and wobble it. It should detach most of the spots. It is being a bit troublesome at the back here. there. There we go. We are now in. Now what do we see? So we have a pretty interesting design. Twin copper pipes going around, one going continuing up, one wrapping around, two system fans. Both of which I'd be guessing would potentially be the same size. Fan one, fan two. So hopefully both of them would be replaceable with the same part. We have a optional extra for a 2.5 inch drive, which this doesn't include inside the machine, the actual connector for it which would be here. So that there would typically go run down and there'd be a little door to board here where you'd be able to put it in. So it does seem to be missing that. Very well, maybe under the end twos here. And onto that anyway. So we also have a removable power jack. So if you do damage this, you can replace just the whole cord rather than soldering a new jack. Interesting enough, has two NVMe slots, which is kind of cool. So let's have a bit of a quick look. And to calm down some people on the internet, I will disconnect the battery first. The battery's here, going to here. Some people scream black and blue, you need to disconnect the battery whenever you touch anything in the machine. I don't really subscribe to that belief. Also do note on the PCIe, there is a thermal pad already attached. A neat little bonus. Let's see what M.2 we got under here. 
if it wants to leave. There we go. So we have a Micron 256 gig NVMe. So what, we have NVMe, uh, PCI slash SATA, and just straight PCI. I do find that neat that there is two of them. Put the shield back on. And we'll continue from there. Pretty easy. Considering they just simply slide into this location here. Do be careful not to push it too low or else you will damage the pins. Screw into here. Done. Over here we have a daughter board which contains a USB, headphone jack, LEDs. So that is removable as well. And a single firing speaker a bit further down. Onwards to the battery, which does look to be fairly small in capacity, but it's actually pretty decent. Um, if we have a look here on this particular model, we have uh, 57 watt hour, oh, yeah, watt hour battery, model number AP18E8M. I would almost be assuming going by the size of this thing, because the physical dimensions of it, excuse my phone, physical dimensions of it seem to be relatively small compared to some, where I'd imagine it could also extend over further to here. The removal of the battery is pretty straightforward. Disconnect the jack, one screw, two screw, tab down here and should be able to lift it up and out from there. Brings us on to the Wi-Fi card which is straight down here. Bingo! We have a Intel AX200 NGW. Installation and removal of that's pretty straightforward. Just like the M.2, single screw, disconnect the antenna cables, put the new one in, reconnect it, oh, put the screw back in, and reconnect it. Moving over, we have what I have come here for. At the moment we have a single stick of Kingston, also 2666. So that would be getting paired with a crucial 2666, also 8 gig model. So one of these it does come as a kit, but doesn't really matter too much. So this should enable dual channel. Now just to clarify on how to install that RAM, these two tabs here pull out. Out. Whoop. And that actually shot it out from the tension. But you do have to put it on a 45 degree angle. So it slides down and in. So you go on about an angle similar to where my hand is right now, push it down, then push it down. Push it in, push it down. In, down. And you did hear that click. That's in there nice and cozy. So from here we also have USB, USB, type C, HDMI out. We have a slimline Ethernet jack. We have the connection for the monitor. And just cruise around a bit more for you guys. Really not much of interest here. Just a little bit of a board overview for some people if they're interested. But that's pretty much it for the RAM upgrade. Fairly similar steps if you're doing either an M.2 upgrade, 2.5 inch drive with the optional flex connector cable that's required. But from here, I'm gonna reconnect the battery. Please don't forget this as I've done many times in the past and will do many times in the future. Connect in. So I'm just using my nail to push that in. And oh. Give you a bit of an idea on the connection there. So the red line is where it's pushed up to. Tape over. Zoom out for you guys. And now it's time to put the back cover back on. So the bottom of it, there's really not that much bracing to it. Definitely seen some other models with a bit more bracing. So you can see here, I believe that's where the M.2s are sitting. So it pushes onto it. 
But anyway, we should catch it over the back and then drop it down. There we go, so if I push this together, click, 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 lay it down and just massage it in all the corners. Push down with gentle force and just keep going around the whole machine. And then proceed to put in your 10 screws. Now the screw length themselves is all the same. You shouldn't really need to have any care where you place them back to. As long as they're all back into place. Also out of habit while it was open, another thing I did was just quickly tighten up the hinges. It's a fairly common thing for me to do, as a lot of machines tend to wiggle their screws loose nowadays. Since I've installed extra RAM into dual channel mode, with it being in dual channel mode, you don't have to do anything to configure that. You simply just install it into your machine and the BIOS UEFI takes care of the rest from there. So I hope this, I hope this video has helped you upgrading your RAM in your Acer Nitro AN515-54 series. That's all for today and catch you later. Bye.